G'day guys and welcome to another Camera Pro review. My name is Phil and today I'll be taking you through a review of the Canon R7 which they released alongside the Canon R10. So for the review today we went out to Australia Zoo. It's a great place to test your cameras and lenses because there's such a good range of animals and wildlife. So before we get into it remember to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest videos. Now, being a Canon shooter for quite a while, I actually started on the Canon 7D, and this is the new version in the mirrorless market. With the design of the camera, they've kept it rather simple, and it is really nice and small as well. You can see you've only got the one small mode dial on top, which makes it nice and easy. And then for video and still photos, you've got your on switch for the stills, and then you've got a clip for the video as well. Now, the, what they have added new is actually the joystick at the back, which is in the middle of their scroll wheel. So we've got the two scroll wheels, one for your thumb and one for the index finger, just making navigation on the camera really easy. So along with the release of the R7, they also brought out the 18-150 to specifically for the crop factors. We took this as an everyday use lens because this is just good for basically everything. You've got the 18 for your wide angle and then we did a little bit of shooting for the wildlife with 150 for anything that was a bit further away. But for anything further than 150, we bought along the 100 to 500, and with the crop factor of the Canon APS-C, that's actually a 160 to 800, which means we didn't miss any shots and you could get even the animals on the other side of the safari. So to test out the 30 frames a second on these guys, we went across to the Australia Wildlife Warriors show, and the camera performed really well. One of the impressive things was the autofocus. This new system is very similar to the R5 and the R6. It manages to hold target really well and the live tracking was very simple to use. We also managed to use the burst during the croc show as well while they were feeding them. And you can see from the shots that the 30 frames a second means you just don't miss out at all. The camera itself, as I say, is quite small. You barely even feel it as you're walking around all day. Now, when you're carrying around a big lens like this guy, it does tend to get a little bit heavier, but once you've attached it, and you're walking around, even though the camera is relatively small, it's still really well balanced. So for anyone shooting a bit of sport and wildlife, I find this is a nice setup and it's very comfortable to use. The flip screen, as always, it's quite common these days, but it is really a must and it makes it so easy to get any different type of angles. And when you're using video, you can use it as a monitor really easily. So sticking in the same line as the original 7D, the R7 also has really decent weather sealing. And we actually had to test it out on the day because it did start raining. It wasn't a heavy downpour, but even with a quick shower, I didn't feel worried about the camera at all. With a weather sealed lens, this body protects you from any sort of weather. And probably one of the big things I did notice on the day, with the new LPE6NH, it's gonna give you pretty much a full day's use. So we took two spare batteries just in case. We found that at the end of the day, shooting a lot of video and stills, we're probably down to only about 30% and we didn't even change battery once. Another really nice fact with the camera is it's 32 megapixels. This means you've got a lot more room to move and you can crop into. So even though we were shooting on 800, if you ever need to get that little bit extra range or you've got a shorter lens, 32 megapixels means you can crop in quite a bit and still keep a decent um, file. So it was a busy day and we had a lot to get around while we were there, but we did manage to test out a bit of the video. It did mean because we were quite busy, I didn't get a chance to set up all the time and put a tripod down. Now the good thing about this is, it does have in-body stabilisation and I was able to use this to my advantage just by helping myself prop up against a rail or alongside a pole and that way it really helps stabilise this footage instead of you know spending a minute, two minutes setting up a tripod each time. And this meant we can get around and see more of the different enclosures or the different animals. With the video, it has got 4K60, which we did do a little testing on, and it's also got 1080 at 100 frames a second as well. And to touch on the tracking of the camera, the new feature they've built in is actually animal tracking. Now, obviously going to Australia Zoo, it's a perfect place to give this a proper test. And I'd say it performed pretty much flawlessly. I didn't have any issues. The only time I did find that it dropped in and out was when a couple of the animals were hiding behind trees and it just got lost in the branches. Other than that, it locked on the whole day. One of the downsides I did find, even though they have added the new joystick and the scroll wheel at the top, I do miss the old thumb wheel at the back where they've taken this out and they've just made it a keypad now. It's still a decent joystick and it works quite well with the scroll wheel, but I just found the placement for my thumb personally is a little bit too high um, and out of place. The other thing I did notice during the day when you're trying to get shots really quick, flicking from your on to your off, if you're in a rush, you can sometimes switch across to the video. Um, and this probably happened to me once or twice, but if you're not in a rush, you can just take your time. It locks in quite well, so there's no issue there. 
probably the only other thing that I found that would be handy and that added bonus would be the little top LCD screen. It's something they used to do in the 7D series, but with the R system, they seem to have taken it away. It's not a big issue, but it does just mean that you do have to go through the back screen and pick your camera up to see your settings, um, whereas before, just looking straight down on top, you can see exactly what you're doing straight away. So to wrap up this review, I highly recommend the Canon R7 for anyone looking for a camera in this range. It's very simple to use. Canon's always been very easy interface, and so it's easy to navigate even if you haven't used their system before. Um, it's nice and small, which is a big plus, I think, for a lot of people looking for a camera in this range. Um, and with the quality of the new sensor and the tracking system in it, means it's really hard to actually miss a shot. The camera does a lot of the work for you. Thanks for tuning in to our review of the Canon R7. Be sure to subscribe so make sure you're up to date with all our latest content. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them down below in the chat and we'll get straight back to you. And remember, you can reach out to us anytime and we're happy to help. Thank you.